Hello. From the video that you have just watched, you have learned that internal energy is determined by the state of the system. It does not depend on the process in which the gas gets to that state. Work example 3 will illustrate this further. In work example 3, we are given that the, the internal energy at state X here, the internal energy at state X is represented by UX. Now state this gas undergoes a change from state X to state Y through this process A represented by a curve in this PV diagram. You are asked to determine the internal energy of the IV gas at state Y. How do we do this? In order to do this, we make use of the expression for internal energy of IV gas, which is purely Ke. Therefore, the expression for internal energy is three for IV gas is three over two mkT. Together with the expression for IV gas, PV is equal to mkT. We can combine these two equations. How do we do that? If you look carefully nkt nkt so we can replace this nkt by pv so we get this expression internal energy is 3 over 2 pv in other words internal energy is directly proportional to pressure and is also directly proportional to v So using the figures in the graph, since internal energy is directly proportional to pressure and also directly proportional to volume, the ratio of internal energy of Y to the internal energy of X, UY over UX, must be equal to PY over PX and BY over VX. So looking at the graph carefully, the pressure at Y is uh, 2, and the pressure at x is 4 with the appropriate units uh, so the ratio the fraction is just 2 over 4 and similarly the volume of y is 4 and the volume of x is 1 so the ratio is 4 over 1 so together that these two ratio gives you 2 Therefore, our final conclusion, we can determine the internal energy of Y is double that of the internal energy of X. Before we go to the next part of this work, example 3, it's important to take note that during the calculation, we did not take into account the process at all. In other words, it does not depend. Even if the gas goes from state to Y by another path, could it be a straight line? or any other path, it does not matter. So what, what we are sh shown here is that the change in the internal energy is path independent. The second part of Wood example 3 talks about if the change, if you are given the value of the change in internal energy by process A is plus, plus 400 joules, represented by plus 400 joules, there's a gain in internal energy of 400 joules, then what will be the change in internal energy to the process B, which is from Y to X, as shown by this red curve here. Again, it's important to take note that the change in internal energy is path independent. It only depends on the state. So what we can do to calculate the, what will be the change in internal energy for path B, we simply take the final state minus the initial state. So the change in internal energy from X to Y through path A is final minus initial. Final is double UX. UY is double of UX. Minus UX gives you UX. And for path B, change in internal energy from Y to X, you take the final X minus the initial y so you can see quite easily here that it is you end up with minus ux 
Therefore, you can conclude that for process B, the change in internal energy is equal to the negative of the change in internal energy of process A. So since process A is positive 400, process B, the change in internal energy for process B, must be minus 400 joules. In other words, there is a decrease in internal energy as the gas goes from state Y to state X. And this also shows that change in internal energy is path independent. It only depends on the two, the two states. That is all for example 3. Thank you.